BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX 18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome back to BBN Tonight. We're going to keep dissecting this weekend's loss with the help of the voice of the Wildcats. Tom Leach joining us now. Hey, Tom, always glad to have you on. And you've called plenty of UK UofL games in your career. This one, probably not the prettiest, not a lot of offensive <laughs> flow from either team in this one. So I'm guessing that's one of the things that stood out to you. Anything else that stood out to you about this game? Mainly, it's it's just what can, the, Kentucky struggles offensively right now. They had a stretch of about nine minutes without a field goal. Uh, I thought defensively they were, were pretty good, especially late. They uh, they did a lot of things well late to come back from seven down to put themselves in a position to uh, go ahead late with uh, some stops that they got uh, and then um, some uh, either baskets or trips to the free throw line that were productive for them. But, you know, every game, it seems like there's one of those long stretches where they have trouble putting the ball in the basket. And if you look at that second half, most of what they did early was in transition offense, and they're still struggling to score a lot out of their set offense in half court. After the game, Coach Calipari said he told Kentucky native Dante Allen to be ready for his chance, but that chance never came. Now, Allen was the only scholarship player who did not check into the game. In today's SEC teleconference, Coach Cal continued to preach, preach patience. He said, quote, I'm in practice every day with these kids, and I know everybody thinks they know my team better than I do. There are a lot of coaches out here right across the state. Tom, do you think we are going to see Allen on the floor this year? Is it a, a thing as simple as a defensive liability, or you know, why, why have we not seen him, in your opinion? Yeah, I think there are... Uh couple of things. One, they're probably, I would guess, maybe some uh, issues defensively, but Cal sees them every day in, in practice. I don't see them every day. And so um, that would be something, you know, he could, could speak to better. Um, you know, I think right now, if you look at a lot of the analytics, their best uh, stretches offensively have been when Askew and Mintz have uh, both played a lot together. And if you're if that's the case, and you're going to play those two guys a lot together, uh, you're trying to get Boston going. Uh, they probably, in retrospect, shouldn't have used Clark the other day, and maybe Dante could have gotten some of those minutes to see what he could do. But I uh, understand him trying to get DJ going because he's certainly not their best player, but he uh, should be their best talent, and they got to translate that into being their best player. And so that maybe is why it's uh, a little bit of a struggle for finding uh, you know minutes for another perimeter player right now but I understand the fan frustration because you know, he's a guy that put up a lot of points and this is a team that's struggling to put up points so I understand that. Well now the Cats have to do what they've tried to do all season and that's move forward and change this momentum. Tuesday's game against South Carolina was postponed due to COVID-19 protocols for the Gamecocks so as of this taping we're looking at a January 2nd start to league play against Mississippi State. Tom what do the Cats need to do this week to be ready for that game? Got to find a way to to score more points. <laughs> He's not Simple. just score more than the other team, but just score more themselves. And then I think that'll lead to outscoring the other team. I mean, they've had uh, six straight games where they haven't broken uh, the 64 point mark, and that's um, you know it's hard to to win when you're consistently doing that against good teams. And you know Olivier Saar has not made a basket in two games. This is a guy that after the Notre Dame game they wanted to run their offense through. And Cal said Saturday that was the game plan to to go at. Uh, Olivier and uh, it last two games that that has not worked well for them. No baskets. Terrence is uh, hurt right now, so he didn't get them any points. Uh, I mean, if you looked at the guys they got points from, uh, you know, if you looked at that box score before the game and you know said that Mince and Toppin uh, were going to be two of your top three leading scores, uh, you might figure that uh, they would have had a, a more difficult time winning as, as opposed to a game where they almost pulled it out. So they've got to get their uh, guys who should be their best scorers to get going. Tom, thanks so much. Look forward to hearing you on the call on Saturday against Mississippi State. Actually, I won't be on that call. I'll be doing the football game in That's Jacksonville. Right. So you will be. Yeah. Who's going to be on the call then? Stuff going on. I right. assume it'll be Darren, uh, Darren. because uh, we'll be probably in the air from Jacksonville <laughs> at that point. If it was a nine o'clock game, I could probably do it, but uh, it's a six, so don't think I can make that. All right, Tom. Thanks so much. Coming up sure. next on BBN Tonight, we'll give you a break from the agony of reliving <laughs> Kentucky Louisville and talk a little bit of football instead. Yeah, we're talking UK, NC State, and you'll hear from Mark Stoops right after this.